every eight seconds of logos. In case you confused it with Cerro de la Muerte in Wisconsin. The movie's opening shot reminds me of Kong Skull Island. And who wants to be reminded of that? We shouldn't be here when it gets dark. This is the kind of place you shouldn't be at even in the light of day, but my guess is there's a lot of gold or an ancient artifact or a portal to a Kurt Russell film down here, so it's probably worth the lives of a few henchmen. You need a doctor? I am a doctor. Doctors, like people from Michigan, never fail to identify themselves to you. Cutting your hand is a terrible option for drawing blood. There are tendons and muscles in there that one needs for daily function. A doctor would f***ing know this. Morbius movie and Insanity had an obvious disagreement about how many bats was enough to represent a lot of f***ing bats. The person who was here before was Milo. No. He was also the new Milo. Before him was the other new Milo. This kid has seen The Devil Wears Prada way too many times, despite the fact that it won't come out in his life for another decade or so. How long have you been here? And you're still not cured. The more important question is, did new Milo wait until he was changed into hospital garments and hooked up to the blood transfusion thingy to ask that second question? And look at the freaks! Movie wastes time on these Stephen King bullies that come out of nowhere and add nothing to the story whatsoever. Milo collapses, machine goes beepy, other kid yells nurse, and no one shows up. So naturally the kid who yelled nurse will now himself... wait, is that a fuse? Is he supposed to be fixing a blown fuse here by replacing it with a spring? What the sh**? It took a team of scientists to build that machine and you fixed it with a ballpoint pen. Yeah, but to be fair, that was some bullshit. There's a school for gifted children in New York. It's basically a child labor camp, but some kids do end up learning a few things. Dear Milo, this isn't goodbye. I'm gonna find a cure for us. Narration and reading. Morbius is just pulling out all the bats. I mean, hits. Michael Morbius completed his doctorate by 19. Am I supposed to be impressed? Doogie Hauser was practicing medicine by age 12. By that measure, Michael is a Philistine. Please step forward to acknowledge the receipt of your prize from His Majesty, the King of Sweden. Sweden? Sweden? Everyone knows that a think prize from Sweden is like a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You just have to pay the right people and it's done. Get back to me when Belgium is giving Morbius a think prize and we'll talk but probably still not. I can't believe you dissed the King of Sweden. Especially after choosing to attend the function. You could have turned the prize down over the phone. Why waste everyone's time? We're supposed to like Michael, right? Dr. Morbius is in trouble. Telling this to a patient of Dr. Morbius. Front page, American scientist rejects Nobel Prize. They are trying too hard to make this guy seem awesome. Does our generous benefactor Milo know what you're actually doing here? If not, then he probably doesn't care because you are doing it in the wide the f open right now, so... We're mixing human DNA with bat DNA. <laughs> I know that's not a punchline, but... <laughs> okay, I think I'm... <laughs> you know, there's something called plausible deniability. Then maybe don't stick the giant vampire bat aquarium right in the middle of a lab Dr. Bancroft is in daily. These are the only mammals on Earth that have evolved to feed exclusively on blood. Absolutely wild to me that this is a Spider-Man villain and not a Batman villain. We have to push the boundaries, take the risk. Without that, there is no science, no medicine. Jared Leto's acting philosophy ends up as actual dialogue in this movie. Pussy. At least Norman Osborn had the balls to test his shit on his own self. Oh no, that mouse we injected with Mountain Dew died! Except I'm sure this is a fake out and the mouse will come back to life and probably even be bloodthirsty like Satan. I don't want to see you get hurt. Dr. Martine Bancroft isn't talking to me in this scene. Dr. Morbius, it's Anna. Anna? Let's f***ing go! Wait, who the f*** is Anna? Temperature's spiking and her kidneys are shooting down. Better inject Mountain Dew into her veins. Doctor, are we sure the illness isn't related to the combination of both Yankees and Mets pennants on the wall? You're late. Doctor, who is that? Also, yet another instance in a movie where someone being late doesn't matter and is really only here for mindless dialogue. I'm close, Milo. I can feel it. A cure. Anytime a movie character says they are close to a cure, you can be sure they are not only not close to a cure, but they are almost certainly close to becoming a villain. We're the original Spartans, mate. And the few against the many. You can't be the original thing while also clearly coming well after the thing. This is like Lionel Hutz saying, we're the original odd couple. Do you really think we give a f which general part of the international waters they're in? Christ. <laughs> Premature celebration. You know, the whole near death thing is very, very chic. I read it in Cosmo. Cosmo references in 2022 are not dynamite, and in fact, they can kiss my grits. This movie wants us to believe that being excellent at origami leads to dates with the ladies, and I can assure you it does not. Nor do magic tricks, memorizing Christopher Cross songs, or being a talented cross-stitcher. Wow, he's all Steve Rogers before the serum kinds of skinny. But 
This is Jared Leto. Do I even want to know if this is CG or not? Now, if this goes like the mouse, he's gonna die first, then she'll look over five minutes later and he'll be washing his face with his paws. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I'm wondering why the f he didn't shoot Morbin when he was still preoccupied with dancing on the ceiling. He should absolutely shoot now. So he mixed vampire bat blood and his own blood and it changed the physical shape of his nose and teeth? I guess this movie is saying that vampire bats can create actual vampires? I liked it better in Blade when it just opened with him being a vampire and I didn't get forced to try and understand a scientific reason for it. Morbius was more than happy to kill the mercs Milo hired for security, but somehow was able to control himself enough to not go after an unconscious Martine. And you might think the movie will eventually explain how he can hold back on these urges, and you would be wrong. What? I know he did supernatural shit last night, but he has no clue if he can turn that back on, or if it was just a reaction to the drug. And even if he's a good swimmer, do you know how far out international waters are? They are, you die by trying to swim it far. All the bodies that you're looking at are nearly drained of their blood. Can you tell that at a crime scene? I guess you maybe can, but that seems like a pretty big leap you would only make at a vampire movie. Do movie hospitals just not have security? Between movies like this, The Fugitive, Halloween 2, etc., you can just skip around wherever you want in an emergency room and read patient charts and steal patients' food and nobody's the wiser. They have eight bodies and one survivor in a coma and you're telling me they don't have anyone guarding her? She's in a coma. Why is there a bottle of pills in the nightstand? Are they shoving medications down her throat? Because I'm thinking they're using the IV to give her the drugs she needs, not, you know, pills. As a result of my procedure, I have an overpowering urge to consume blood. Human blood. But how does he know that for certain? Has he tried other animal blood in the meantime? Seems like you'd at least give some cow or pig blood a spin before committing to this theory. It's Mormon time! I've even developed a form of echolocation. The f***? All your stupid ass did is take an earth creature's blood and put that shit in your body. This movie isn't even saying there's a history of vampires or anything. It seems like the movie is saying he's the very first one, and I hate that fucking shit. Why does his ear look like a sarlacc pit? How does that help with echolocation? Dolphins use echolocation, and I bet you can't even tell me what a dolphin's ears fucking look fucking like, you dick. Gah! The question is, how do I control it? Isolate it, breathe, and let it go. Well, that was fucking easy. But also, Morbius stole my method for holding in my orgasms. For longer, I mean. Not, like, won't hold them in forever or anything. That would be uncomfortable. I imagine. I'm guessing because I definitely let them out. You know, eventually. Okay, this is meant to show how amazing his echolocation is, but I think his aim is actually way more impressive here because he managed to throw that ball in a spot where it would bounce off 13 surfaces and return directly to his fucking hand like a boomerang. That's amazing! One question remains. Who let the dogs out? Michael, it's Milo! <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing still calling yourself Milo? Your name is Lucian. And yeah, I guess the Milo thing would have been funny when you were kids, but based on how much time and money you're assisting Michael with, the least he could do is call you by your actual name. And somehow he sees Michael write blood on glass and is 100% certain that means Michael needs to drink blood. That kills people. This movie has so many iconic lines. It's Morbin time. No, Morb am your father. I killed people. Agent Stroud and Rodriguez. Oh yeah! There are detectives investigating the murders! I forgot all about them, and one of them is Tyrese! But also, why are there US detectives investigating murders that occurred in international waters? That was a Panamanian boat, so the jurisdiction falls to Panama. Sorry for the graphic nature of some of these photos, but um, you're a doctor, so you know what people look like on the inside. But just because she's a doctor doesn't mean she's dissecting people on the daily. He could have at least asked if she wanted to finish her shitty hospital jello before looking at the murder photos. Who's working at the Horizon building looking at x-rays at 2.24 a.m. when the rest of the entire wing is blacked out like it's empty or literally no one else is awake on this floor? Anyone who has ever seen a movie, and I mean any movie, knows that there is no way this is Michael attacking the employee. So it's a dumb movie is trying to hide the fact that it's Milo. Stroud and Rodriguez just mentioned Michael's name when they were questioning Martine. So how have they not gone to Horizon and questioned him yet? It's been at least a few days since all the dead bodies were discovered. I guess they can't know for a fact Michael was on the ship, but they thought enough about him to bring his name up to Martine. This dead body has just been left in this hall and no one has seen it until now? Was Michael asleep a few doors down when Milo murdered this person? Those bad ears are sh**. All right, before he even came out here, Morbius is super hearing her. Someone say, it looks like all the blood was drained from her body. And looking at this woman, there was no way to know that sh**. 
by sight. It's just a thing they keep having these characters say, so you will think the vampires leave more evidence behind than they probably do. You really think these vamps are drinking a gallon and a half of blood, slurping hard at the end like the body is a straw so they can suck out the last bits of red juice from the victim's toes? Morbid is using crutches for appearances sake now, but back when he came out of Anna's room, he was standing without support for all the staff and patients to see. Yeah, you're coming with us. How are the handcuffs necessary at this point? I know it's super odd that there's another dead body with his blood missing this close to Michael, but they don't know Michael has convenient bat ears and heard the report come in. Also, <laughs> they let Michael keep his notebook in jail? That could be evidence! It's triple blessed. Overblessing your holy water. Bag of artificial blood, yeah. It's an evidence, I'm sorry. But the notebook that could have all the information you need in regards to what Michael has been up to with his experiments is not evidence. But you do you, Officer Doofus. I'm starting to get hungry. You don't want to see me when I'm hungry. This riff on the traditional don't want to see me when I'm angry Hulk line is neither appreciated nor earned. They did this joke with Ed Norton's Hulk too, and it wasn't funny then either. And they're charging me with murder. Um, rightfully so. You 100% murdered eight people. Hey, your highness, time's up. What? It's been like two minutes! Even suspected vampire murderers get a reasonable amount of time to sit down with their lawyer and discuss the case. Milo drops a packet of blood for Michael to drink so he can escape prison, because notoriously, prisons never frisk visitors or check them for Capri Suns full of blood. <laughs> this works. Danny Beagle, please, sir. This was definitely one of the movies ever created. You think I'm joking? No one sees Milo turn into a vampire and brutally murder a newsstand vendor in the middle of a busy street. I'm not sure how else I would do it, but it's kind of hilarious to me that his tracing colors are the orange of his prison jumpsuit. Like, somehow the visuals of the Morbius vampire powers are still tied to the color of whatever clothes Michael was wearing before he went vamp. I killed the nurse. I killed the nurse. Man, on a public street with lots of witnesses, I feel like Milo just inadvertently signed his own warrant. As you watch this battle and root for Jared Leto, I remind you that Leto's character has murdered eight people, and Milo has only murdered one or two. So, if we have to choose sides here, and clearly we do, then we should probably be Team Milo if we're going from a pure justice standpoint. We've evolved! No, you took a serum that had another species' blood in it. You apparently have no concept of evolution, honestly. Michael! Michael! Michael. Morbid. Milo, how's the peeping? Milo, how's the peeping? Milo, 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 Milo. This article heading states that the police seek to question Michael, but he was already arrested. He's an escaped fugitive at this point. Also, apparently the chameleon escaped as well, so it seems like the front page story should be about how New York City prisons are not great at keeping criminals in them. Hey, stranger. F*** off that he's here right now. You go straight to goddamn hell. I didn't kill no sudden. Or the police. Or any of those people. Just the eight on the boat then? You did kill the mercs. You 100% did that. This movie is absolutely napalming the fact that he's a murderer. His face is on the front page of the paper and they went to a busy cafe? Not that kind of vampire. Just checking. But why would Martine think that he was that kind of vampire? They literally had to walk through daylight to get to this cafe. I'll become like Milo. You won't? He already did back when he chomped eight people to death on the boat. I am Leto. I wish you were, because then I would be watching a much better movie. Six to eight weeks of ibuprofen should heal up just fine. Not without a splint, or at least some tape to keep the broken fingers stabilized. He might even need surgery. You call yourself a doctor. No one will be seated during the scene where Michael builds a centrifuge and blood mixing lab out of counterfeiting machines. I'm gonna do you a favor. Let me walk out of here. In the movies, this only ever happens to people the audience knows is going to kick ass, like Jack Reacher, or Ethan Hunt, or Tom Cruise. But also, they said her drinks are spoken for, and then she drank the drink anyway like she didn't care. So, are they just deciding who can and can't hit on women in this bar? Because they're acting like she's their girl, and she's acting like she's not. This place is sealed off, and Michael stole an entire counterfeiting lab so he could do blood sh without having to come here. But now Martine and Milo are here chilling out, and no one even seems to be guarding this place at all. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Look, any detective smart enough to call the cat would also be smart enough to shake the food dish and not the litter pan. What a f***ing dumbass. Also, keeping your litter box in the middle of the hallway. It's time to eat, you little monster. Oh. You have to be pretty stupid, and or uncoordinated, to cut yourself while opening a can of f***ing cat food. You wanted a scene where Michael was tested by his bloodlust while Martine was the only available victim. So sure, you need her to get cut and bleed, fine, but you went with cut self while opening cat food? <laughs> you f***ing idiots! How does it feel when you're unread? 
She says when you're on red instead of when you've drunk real actual human blood. And it's weird to me that she's just making up slang for types of blood now, like she's selling WNDs or Pandemic on the Baltimore street corners. Good as new. Nice work, doctor. Would a Band-Aid really kill the blood smell for a vampire? Because I don't think it would. He killed eight people! And no, I will not stop harping on this because it's fucking nuts that she and everyone else is willing to forgive and forget that shit. He was looking for Michael. He followed Martine to Michael. He is spying on them kissing, but it seems he's still waiting for something. Maybe his next life, as we cut to the next morning. That's what these bloodsuckers do. They multiply. So, wait, are vampires real in this movie now? I mean, before Michael and Milo? You can't have him say a line like this without there being previous in-world evidence of vampires. This bird never moves at all during this entire scene. So does this guy have a stuffed bird in a cage on his desk? And if so, is that the most specific piece of character development for a character with five lines in history? Like the victims before them, they were completely drained of their blood, earning the killer the moniker Vampire Murderer. That is the worst killer name of all time. First of all, it's bland as fuck. But second, and more importantly, taken at face value, it suggests that the killer is murdering vampires. Not that the killer is a vampire. Christ, it'd be like calling the Boston Strangler the Strangler Murderer, or calling Son of Sam the Mailman Murderer. You're scaring me, please. You saw him on TV after he murdered people, and yet you still came here, so... If you're scared right now, at least some small portion of that is on you. There's no shame in what we are. Eh... Tell Michael you tell him I'm gonna kill as many as I want. Attempting to murder someone, you want to pass on a message. He's only destroyed by a stake through the heart, made from the wood of the Holy Cross. Why would Michael or Martine even think this is a possibility? Martine proved that sunlight doesn't affect Michael, so the traditional vampire rules could very well be ineffective. But tomorrow I'll be forced to consume human blood and I can't do that. Again. You forgot to say again. Also, I must say, once again, you could f***ing try out another animal's blood before just going straight to human. So this is your solution, huh? Injecting yourself with poison. Oh no! She's gonna voluntarily let him drink her blood, isn't she? Oh no! So instead of just attacking Michael and Martine back when he was Tommy peeping on them kissing, he waited so he could kill Jared Harris first and then kidnap Martine after Michael went to check on the... This is way too convoluted! I want to ask you. So what is the actual range of bat ear detection? The internet tells me it's 2 to 10 meters, but they're expecting us to believe it's more than a few rooms over, and I'm calling bat sh**. The fact that the actors learn how to fly for this movie makes it one of the movies ever. Make it mean something. Make it mean something. You had so many chances to not be involved in this, yet you chose time and again to stay involved. And now you're like, make my sacrifice mean something like your Tom Hanks at the end of Saving Private Ryan. God damn. Feeding off your dead girlfriend. Why do I get the feeling I'm going to understand about 10% of what happens from here on out? Honestly, this final fight is probably the best time in the whole film for you to go to the bathroom. Also, whether it's Sony or Disney, it just wouldn't be a Marvel movie without it ending on two beings that appear to be equally powerful battling it out, and the good guy, or at least the gooder guy, will win because reasons. It's weird they chose to set the finale in the same under-construction tunnels from Die Hard with a Vengeance. This rippling in the water will cause a bunch of vampire bats that are just hanging out in the New York City subway system for some reason to come and save Michael, and I f***ing hate everything. Is there any particular reason the bats like Michael more than Milo? Michael was the one keeping them captive, after all. Guys, I no longer know what's going on. Morbius Breaking Dawn, Part 1. These credit scenes have gone too far! I'm not sure how I got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. So why would the Doctor Strange spell from No Way Home bring that universe's vulture to this universe? In No Way Home, everyone was getting pulled into Tom Holland's universe. But I think a bunch of guys like us should team up. Could do some good. Intriguing. Is it, though? Why would Morbius have any interest in going up against Spider-Man? What has Spider-Man done to him to warrant an immediate team-up with a supervillain Michael has never met? Also, where did the Vulture get his tech in this universe? Based on what we've seen in the Venom movies, this universe doesn't have a Tony Stark or an Avengers, which, which means no alien invasion and therefore no alien tech for the Vulture to use. Also, also, I guess Morbius either figured out a way to live off non-human blood or is just okay with killing humans all of a sudden. Did I mention I f***ing hate everything now? It's made from guano. Guano! That sounds so familiar. Once we've concluded our business here. All right, guys, uh, listen to the blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? You know what occurred to me? Oh. No. You're just a kid. Everybody down to the lab now. Were well, you calling from a walkie talkie? Wake up, please. Hey, Michael! Sorry. You're going to be okay. You're gonna be okay! Say the goddamn word! 
One question remains. Why does Radio Shack ask for your phone number when you buy batteries? I'm thinking about um, taking a trip. One dock for a minute. Taking heat. Uh, making a change? Yeah, don't tell me. Making a change. Either you got heat or you don't. The cripple, did you see him? The cripple, which way did he go? Mr. Anderson. This is wrong. Come on, Michael! Come on! What are you waiting for, huh?